We bless the name of the Lord today. Thank you, Pastor Soji, for this wonderful opportunity given to me uh, to be on your platform again. I want to appreciate you for the great work that God is using you to do around the world. Uh, the burden upon your life and the color upon your life actually is intercession. Intercession is actually uh, kind of work that is not a uh, pulpit ministry necessarily. It's not something out there in the public. It is uh, almost like uh, work that you are doing behind the scene. It is behind the scene because there are three things that activate the heavens, that open up the heavens. Jesus called them, uh, he said, when you pray, when you fast, and when you give alms, these three things are the things that regulate Christianity because they open up the heavens, they trigger the spirit, the move of the spirit, they provoke God to speak, they provoke God to action. It was when Solomon gave an offering that the spirit of God moved. It was when Colonius prayed, fasted, and gave arms, combined the three, that the heavens opened unto them. And uh, Jesus will not help us do them in the public. Preaching can be in the public. Uh, evangelism can be in the public. Teaching of the ministry can be in the public. There are miracles are not in the hidden, are not at the background, are in the public. But what provoke the manifestation of the miracles? God will always have them done at the background. And prayer is one of them. And uh, uh, that is where God has called you to be. I'd like to encourage you, I'd like to uh, strengthen you, because nobody will come and say thank you. Nobody. Because nobody's even seeing what you're doing. And more so that if you don't have a, a, a church setting, running, if it's just a ministry or a kind of program that you do once upon a time, uh, the people may see the effect. They might be, if the effect of what you are doing might be in the city. But nobody will know it because it will not be tied to you. And so nobody will know what you are doing. I'd like to encourage you that this thing that you are doing, keep it up. This is what keeps Christianity alive. This is what preserves Christianity. This is what triggers the move of God. Thank you for having me again. God bless you. Today we'll be considering the book of we're looking at the book of Genesis chapter 26 because my topic this time around is reactivating the spiritual reservoir of Nigeria the spiritual reservoir of Nigeria why do we have to activate reservoir it means that the reservoir had got comatose it is no longer functioning the way it should function and that is why we have to activate it to make it function again so that it can make Nigeria great, to fulfill the purpose in which God originally uh, uh, began that move. No move of the Spirit of God actually uh, begins, you can trace it to a particular individual. Because in the book of Genesis, the Bible told us that the Spirit of God moved. So, from before the war began, before God will begin work, it was the spirit that moved first before every other thing began to uh, come alive or began to walk or began to live. The world itself evolved out of the move of the spirit of God, out of the activation of the spirit of God. But in Genesis, it was God himself that did the activation. God was trying to show man something. He was going to teach man something that if you must prosper in this life, you must do anything in this life, my spirit will move first. And that was the reason why Jesus said, my father walketh, and hitherto I walk. If the spirit of God is moving, God is walking. When the spirit is stopped, God has stopped. And the reason why most times, uh, we have to reactivate the spirit of God again, and again, and again, or cry for the move of God, or cry for the awakening of the spirit of God, again, is because when the spirit of God stopped walking, people be continue walking. And when people continue walking, when God has stopped, it becomes religion. Because bothersome. That's the reason. That, that, that's one of the things that makes that, that constitute hindrances to the workings of God in other dispensations. When God has stopped working, you are working. Or when He's not working at all, you are working. Or you are working what He is not working. You are not aligned with Him to do what He should do or what the Spirit should do. In Genesis, the Bible says, the Spirit of God moved. For the first time, we saw the move of the Spirit of God without the instrumentality of man, without the involvement of man. It was God himself that triggered the move 
of the Spirit. God will not do anything until his Spirit moves. And the Bible did not tell us that after God has finished creating the heavens and the earth, because after the Spirit moved, that he spoke, and there, there was light. And thereafter, he continued creation. The Spirit did not stop moving. It was the Spirit was moving that he was working. And he worked for seven days because of the flood of the Spirit. Because the supply of the Spirit was so much that he could finish everything within seven days. And of the seventh day, the Bible says, within six days, on the seventh day, the Bible says, God rested. But the Bible did not tell us that the Spirit had gone back. The Spirit was still there. It was trying to show man something. It was trying to teach Adam something. That in this last time, it's not in your dispensation, you will not do anything unto my Spirit. Moved. And that was the reason why he packed the Spirit and put it in the garden. The Bible calls it the tree of life. And at the end of time, he eats of that tree. Not only that, he was uh, going to align with God and begin to uh, move in the frequency of God and continue to rule and dominate the earth according to the will of God, but that he was going to live forever on the face of the earth. God was teaching Adam something. He was letting him know, teaching him to know that nothing will happen on the earth without my spirit. I will not do anything if my spirit does not move. You will not rule and have dominion the type that I say you should have if my spirit is not involved. You can't do that independent of my spirit. And the reason why I know that God was teaching man this was because when the second Adam came, it was the same thing that the second Adam began. That, that was the first Adam supposed to do. That he didn't do. The last Adam, sorry. When the last Adam come talking about Jesus. The first thing he did, first engagement that we saw Jesus was engagement of the spirit. He, 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 he began to pray. At the baptism in Jordan, the scripture says that John the Baptist was baptizing and Jesus was at the baptismal service. And the scripture says he was praying. He engaged the spirit realm. He provoked the spirit realm. And the Bible said that the spirit of God descended on him. The spirit moved to the arena where they were. And the Bible says, God said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That is what Adam was supposed to do in the garden. That's how he was supposed to live. He was not supposed to do anything at all without provoking the move of the spirit. Provoking the move of the spirit. Anytime the spirit moves, God speaks. And when God speaks, it's done. Anytime the spirit moves, God moves. Anytime the spirit moves, God is walking. When God stopped walking, when the spirit stopped moving, God has stopped walking. And the reason why most times we have to lose a move of God and wait for another generation before it will come and then trigger another move of God is mostly because people who are supposed to keep the move of God on, who are supposed to keep on passing the move of God from generation to generation, sometimes, either that, they hand over, without handing over the principles and the consecration that kept that move of God active, or they hand over to people who are, 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 are completely indifferent, who are completely unconcerned, about the consecration that brought that move into being. For instance, Elijah, a move began with Elijah. And the Bible intends, according to scriptures, the Bible intends that that move should be handed over from generation to generation to generation. He didn't ex expect that that move should stop with anybody. He didn't expect that the move should stop with Elijah. Elijah handed over to Elisha. And Elijah was supposed to hand over to Gehazi. And Gehazi was supposed to hand it over to another person. And that move was supposed to continue like that day, in a day. It was not supposed to be lost along the line. The move of God was not supposed to be lost along the line. The move of God was supposed to, was supposed to stop along the line. Until that which God had in, in mind that he initiated that move has completely come to pass. But Elijah handed over to Elijah. Elijah could hand over to Gehazi. But if you look at the life of Elijah, you realize that actually the move 
was handed over to him. The spirit was handed over to him. But the consecration that kept that spirit powerful, moving, touching the earth, bringing the consciousness of God in the landscape was not handed over to him because the Bible said Elisha, the servant of God, was sick. Come on. With all the anointing, with all the move of God, resident in his vessel, he was sick. Meanwhile, the person who handed over the anointing to him was never sick. He was taken by a wide wind to heaven. And that is how it was supposed to continue. Elijah was supposed to be taken also by a wide wind to heaven. Gehazi was supposed to be taken also by a wide wind to heaven. Going by the consecration and the intention of that move. Elijah handed over to Elisha. But he didn't hand over what the structures. Or he handed over, but he did not take cognizance. He didn't take this seriously. The structures that sustain that move. Which one of them was secret life? Prayer. I'll never say anywhere in scripture where the Bible says that Elisha was found alone. Or he was in the wilderness. Or he was somewhere praying. Never. But you always hear that Elijah was in the wilderness. It was a, before a brook. It was alone. He prayed and put his head between the knees and asked someone to go and see the effect of what he's doing. They pray the spirit, let him go and see the effect. Is there anything in the sky? Oh, the guy went there and he said he had not seen anything at all. He said, go again. He did that seven times. That is seven dimension of prayer. The Bible says, pray all kinds of prayers. So before the spirit of God moves, or before he does any phenomena, a miracle that is phenomena, he does anything that uh, 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 that people will, uh, will, will, will be like, wow, God is here. He will go into the closet. He will commune with the spirit. He will do something that will tear the move. And when he comes on the scene, when he's speaking, it's not him that's speaking. It is the move that he has trapped. In it, that he brings. And then he declared that for three and a half years, there should be no rain. In the book of James, so the book of James, that we were told that he prayed for, that there should be no rain for three and a half years. And then he prayed again that there should be rain. But actually, if you go to scripture, it's called that James said something that was not recorded. Because according to scriptures, we only saw where he came and declared that there shall be no rain for three and a half years. But according to my words, But Jesus told us that before he came out to declare those words, he prayed. And the, 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 the scripture did not capture that. The satellite did not capture that. The secret life was not captured. But James saw that by revelation. God opened his eyes and saw the labors of Elijah in the secret place. And he discovered that this was the reason for this move. This was the reason for this anointing. This was the reason for this grace that he carried. He went in. That's why uh, James said chapter, chapter 5. He said, Elijah was a man like passion. Subject to like passion as we are. He prayed that it should not rain. And it didn't rain. And then he prayed again that it should rain. And then the rain came. So there was a structure. There was a lifestyle. There was a discipline that sustained that move. And when it was handed off to someone who no problem was careless, or who did not study the life of the man who was behind this move, or who was the reason for this move, it was handed over to him, and because of that, he fell sick. He was not taken. He had no relationship with God. He had no relationship with the Spirit of God. And therefore, because of lack of personal discipline, he fell sick. And we lost that move. But the Bible said, when Jesus came, Jesus said, before, it was written because Isaiah has already prophesied that before Jesus will come, that spirit will come again. Hallelujah. Because it was lost. There will be need 
to provoke it again. There will be need to awaken it again. There will be need to activate it again. It has become the inheritance of Israel. It has become the, the, like the reservoir, what we're talking about, of Israel. It has become their right. It has become their best right. Anyone at all who is not satisfied with what's going on and, and has heard of how God has moved with the people of Israel before can tap into the realm of the Spirit and provoke that move to come to pass and Elijah will come again. The spirit will come again. It has been prophesied. The scripture Jesus said, they said that Elijah will come again. And, 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 and has he come? And all of that. Jesus said, You don't know. <laughs> Elijah is already here. The spirit is already here. He has come and you have done whatever you want to do with him. And you're not aware. And I was talking about John the Baptist. But look at how John the Baptist came. In the book of Luke chapter 1, if you read that word, you see how he came. A man called Zacharias of the coast of Abia. This is from chapter 5, verse 5. The Bible says he was a, a priest and his lot was to burn incense. And he was, okay, let's go there, let's go there. Luke chapter 1, I think verse 1. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, talking about John the Baptist, Luke chapter 1, verse 5. A certain priest named Zacharias of the coast of Abia and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Verse 7, and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. Verse 8 says, and it came to pass that while he executed the priest office of before God in the order of his course, According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right hand of the altar of incense. Means that was what provoked that angel. The right hand of the Altar of incense, and when Zachariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the, but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers, the children, and disobedience to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people. For the Lord. So prayer is what prepares the move of God, the move of the Spirit of God that prepares people to genuinely seek God. If there is no move of God, if the Spirit, what is making people come together is comedians coming to gather people, is comedians coming to make people laugh, that is making people come to church, is other attraction other than the move of the Spirit of God. People are not prepared. It's only the Spirit of God that convicts sins. It's only the Spirit of God that can make a man look up to God. It's only the Spirit of God that can make a man walk in righteousness. So if the Spirit is the move and is the attraction in a generation, that generation is already prepared to meet with the Lord. In the book of Zechariah chapter 12, the Bible says, I will pour upon my spirit. I think chapter 10, upon the house of Judah and the house of Jerusalem. And they shall look up to me. There can be no absolute surrender, commitment, to the cause of God. If the Spirit of God is not the one steering, if it is not the one moving, if it is not the one behind whatever is happening, people are not prepared. And so, because the move was lost, even though the Spirit was still there, but it was dormant, inactive, dead, and immobilized. I hear someone comes on the scene, and the Lord began to put a burden in his spirit, a burden to prayer. And if you look at Zechariah, they said they were once stricken in years. They had served 
the Lord all oh, the days of their life full time. This kind of thing is not a part time work. The kind of thing that will cause the Spirit of God to move. The kind of people, the people that will trigger the move of the Spirit is not people who are doing a part time basis. On part time basis, it's people who are committed, who have given themselves to the service of that spirit all the days of their life. Full time. They serve the Lord. There were supposed to be so many distinctions, but they, were, they looked away from those distractions. They despised barely. They despised the fact that there was no child and then they, they keep on serving. And then, bam! By that consecration and by that level, the Bible says they betted. What they betted was not just a child. It was not just John the Baptist. They betted a spirit. So it's just that John the Baptist was the one that should carry the inheritance, the spirit. So it was not just John the Baptist. The scripture says that he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb for the first time in the history of scriptures. That I was saying that someone was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Jesus was a child of the Holy Ghost, not a child of biological uh, uh, intimacy. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was the Holy Ghost. It was the seed of the woman, the seed of the Holy Ghost that came into the womb of Mary and the child was formed. But John the Baptist, the Bible says, he shall be the labor in the presence of God was what orchestrated that divine move of God. And so the child was filled with the Holy Ghost, was initiated from the womb. And when he came out, he came out with the Spirit. It was not just the Holy Ghost that he came out with now. He came out with a move that had begun in Israel that was supposed to be consistent till this time, that was lost. It was that move that someone provoked in the realm of the Spirit that came upon his son John the Baptist to move in the spirit and in the power oh my God of Elijah. Most times the people who provoke the move of God they are not necessarily the one that will carry the move. Sometimes the people who will provoke this move they are not necessarily the ones that will be on the spotlight. Sometimes the people who will provoke this move they are not the only ones that will be moving in signs and wonders but they can bet the people who, oh my God, oh my God, so pende, abrata, sebarate, cantona. I believe that something's got to move in Nigeria. Like ketono, sekanto, cabranda, cabruze. But the level of some few individuals who would decide to make the altar, the permanent place of abode, like, 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 like Zacharias, who stayed, he and his wife stayed in the presence of God all the days of his their lives. They were blameless. The spirit testified. So they were barren not because a sensual spirit was following them. The 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 was from the designers of error. So it was not an ancestral spirit. It was not. It was not. No 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 no. That was not it. That was not it. The Lord had to stop that because something divine was going to come out of their their belly. The children that were going to be born were not children that were born and give us give them physical posterity or physical children. No. And that was the reason why John the Baptist never had a child. He never had a child. The move was not to bring out, no, 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 no. Why he conceived was not so that he can continue giving birth to biological children and leave a posterity to Zacharias. No. The reason was to birth something in the realm of the spirit that can move and bring the hearts of people back to God. Because the Bible says that they shall go in the power and the spirit of Elijah and shall turn the hearts of the father to children and the heart of the children is only the spirit of God that can do this. No human resource management in the world that can. Achieve this feat. Thank you, Spirit of God. Tane bakama sukebre. We provoke isokem pan tekebros e kabalas the grace to stay full time in your house, in your presence, in your house, in your presence, in the secret place. Let's be consumed with the Father's pleasure until. 
will release a move of your spirit upon the landscape. And this was what was seen in the scripture that I quoted earlier on, the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 15. For all the words which his father's servant had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had taught them and filled them with the earth. All the wells. All the wells. Remember God called Abraham and said that he was going to be a nation. He would make him a nation. He was already a nation already with that name until Israel came out of the loins of Isaac and, 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 and there when he, when he, le- he, he fought he, he strived with God when, when, when he, when he, 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 he was in the place of prayer where, where, where he fought with God and then he said you must bless me if you don't bless me he engaged an angel of God in, in a battle in, in a warfare and then they demanded that he should be blessed and when the angel now said what is your name he said your name is Jacob he said no 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 for eternity that was an intercession your name is supposed to be called Israel from first born, and that was when the nation was born. Israel. But before now, the nation was Abraham. And, and it was on account of this that Abraham uh, did this word, dog a word, and it was this word that was flourishing. This word that was water greatness of that nation. But this word was the reason for the greatness of Abraham. He dug a well. And while he was alive, nobody could contend with the well. Nobody could contend with the revival. Nobody could contend with the spirit that was, was, was present. That was the reason for his advancement and his enlightenment and all of that. And when he died, the scripture says that the Philistine that was taught the well, first of all, well, and then he shot the well. Greatness was hijacked. If it must be greatness, if it must continue, if Isaac must continue in the, in the shoes, on the heels of his father, it must continue in this move that he has to. This is not an option. He will have to activate these wells. These wells have to be put to function. Again, the wells has to be functional. Again, if he will ever attend to greatness. Now, the question is, why was the well stopped? Why was it healed with them? For that person, what they want to see, the return of the human, which was once delivered from the There has to be a fight to bring a move of God on the landscape, and there has to be a fight to sustain that move. Because the Philistine will definitely come. After that, because you know that you are your destiny, your greatness lies there. Your greatness, the greatness of Israel, the greatness of the nation that they will have, lies in this world. And they know that that's your secret. So they will contain what it is stop it from making you that of what they can make. We call it the Spirit of God. And when they die, what it is, it was not that you want to go back to the so they were not interested in what they did. They were not interested in what But they would not want to have you have water. So it was not the water that they threw to keep so they can use. No. That is not the idea. The idea is to stop the water from flowing. If they can stop the water from flowing and cover it with well, then destiny is not in view. The plan and the purpose of God of your life will not come to pass. The purpose of God of the nation will never come to pass. That which God has prophesied, that which is in your future, greatness, will be a lie. Will be a lie. And Satan will make you to believe a lie. Because what God has spoken concerning will never come to pass. In chapter, the same chapter from verse, verse, verse 18, the Bible says, and Jacob, I can't engage them again. Jacob began to engage them again. And Isaac, sorry, Isaac, sorry. I said Jacob, Isaac began to engage them again. And the Bible says, and Isaac did again the words of water 
which they had did in the days of Abraham's father. For the Philistines had, the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. So you see that he followed after the father's footsteps. Jesus said, I do nothing of my own until what I the father do. You are not coming to invent. You are not going to apostle to us that you don't need to be creative. I have come in the volume of the book to do that we go God. If you must achieve greatness, then you put your own personal agenda aside. You put your own innovation, your own philosophy and, and, and logic aside. You put your, 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 your thinking, your own wisdom aside. You take the wisdom of the spirit. You must do as it's written there. Concerning you put aside Personal put aside. The head yes, that the Put aside all of that. Take the wisdom of Go and it's written concerning you in the world of So he followed Abraham. He didn't edit and he didn't say, Oh, we are not civilized. Abraham was of the old school. We are not. No, 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 Surely was going to break out of something. Surely was going to cause a little more. Surely was going to. Oh God. The next verse. And the herdsman of Gerah did strive with Isaac, herdsman. See, the water is ours. And he called the name of the place the word Esau. Because they stood with me. These were the people who closed the word at the other time. Stop the word and feed it with ice. They are coming now to drag to the well again. At that time, there was nobody to drag with. So Close the well. They didn't use the water. They don't want to have the water. Water is not of importance to them. But they don't want to have it. So they stroll with him again and close the well. He stole this time and then he left them. I went to dig another one. No, 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 no. That is not how Abraham was doing. No, no, no. He began to miss it in this way. He began to miss it. He began to miss it. He began to miss it. Why was he so much a like, gentle? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like Isaac in this way. I don't like him. This is too gentle. Uh, uh, it's not a fighter like Jacob. Jacob will not. You know, Isaac, they have to do everything for him. They have to marry for him. Go and, go and get a damsel for him. And, 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 and just give him. Yeah, and, 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 and he was just so gentle, kind of person. If you come and say, no, I don't want to have any problem. Just, 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 just. And then he went to dig another one again. They came and said, no, 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 no. no. And he got to a place where they called Rahab. Where did he come? That was how we are the dwell. And they began to increase. Began to grow. And they became very great. Because that was the secret. That was the reservoir. That was the deposit that should drive the nation of Israel. Every human being for the peace of God is a deposit that should drive every nation. God deposits something in that nation that if that should drive, that should run the nation. But here we find someone who was seen. Who could not fight? Meanwhile, his father fought to keep those things. And when the father died, there was nobody to look after it. Enemies came and closed it. And then he came again, and then he began to dig. As he began to dig, they came again. The people who came to close it, they said, It is ours. It is yours. But you didn't take care of it, and then it goes close. How is it yours? Was it your father that dug it? How is it yours? And then he left. I went to dig another one. They came again. He left. I went to dig another one. They came again. He left. I went to dig. And when he went further, he would score that. Thank God. He came and said, You are bigger than us. This is an individual. A nation comes to say, You are bigger than us. For that we see the hand of God upon your life. We have seen the hand of God upon your life. For we have seen the hand of God upon your life. For we have seen revival, in other words, of God upon your life. And any time that the Spirit of God will move in this magnitude, in this, uh, this level of intensity, it is the hand of God being activated. Awake! Awake! Thou hand of God. And thou, not it. Thou caught rehab. And thou, not it. Ada, move the hand of God. And that was the hand of God that was in Israel in the days 
of Samuel. But the Bible says, all the days of Samuel, as long as Samuel was alive, the hand of God, he provoked that hand, a move of the Spirit of God. The hand of God was against the Philistines. The hand of God was against the Philistines on the account of Samuel. And the Bible says he built an altar and ordered a rama. But when he died, it was a rama. That the Bible says that Rachel could not be comforted because there was nobody again that could provoke, could keep that trigger. We maintain that move. We sustain that move until that move does what God wanted it to do. There was nobody. That's the reason why again and again and again and again we keep carrying praying for revival, crying for revival. God did never intended that revival should start and stop. No, 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 no. From the Genesis chapter one, what we read from Genesis chapter one, what we read, the move of the spirit that began that that created the heavens and the earth. And 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 within six days and the seventh day God rested. God expected that that move will continue far. Man, if you can only understand the trigger of the spirit, the keys of the spirit, he will trigger it and he will begin to dominate. Bam. That unction. And when he healed, Jesus came, the last Adam. And when he came, he began to do the things that the first Adam would have done. And then he provoked that. And he summarized his ministry. He said, He will die. He will break this temple. He will destroy this temple. And in three days, in three days, he will raise it up again. In three days, his own was going to be faster than the one that, 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 that God did. God was six days. He is, his own, his, his is in seven, sorry, three days. Three days because of the volume of the release of the Spirit. The greater volume of the Spirit of God available for you will cause you to you know, accomplish impossible tasks faster than it should be. Three years and half. His ministry was three years and half. He said he will raise it in three days. Three and a half years. Till today, till the war is, 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 until we go to another war. You can never erase the name of Jesus. You can never deny. You can't. You can't. All of, so many of us here now, up to now, we are still trusting God to, uh, to know what God wants us to do. Oh, I have so much to say, but we have to, 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 we have Boku te kipo bakus e predi kabaras kaputo e teke piko e brakus e tike to ras e taita e tokandala e noksuse deke libro kalate neza data la balikota. We thank you, the Spirit of God. We thank you, that Spirit of the Living God that makes people, takes people, and breaks them into the crisis, that burdens people, that draws people into the crisis, that put your burdens upon them until they bet avalanche of the Spirit, that they bet your way, they bet your move. Thank you for hovering over Nigeria. Thank you for giving us the responsibility. Thank you for that fire. Thank you for certain people into the closet and they're causing things to happen and that's the reason why today in nigeria it is nigeria that worship songs are rising in the other, the, 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 the decade it was coming from the west from america but right now worship most voices around the world like sinach like like like, like they are coming from nigeria that is to say that the reservoir is about to come alive the reservoir is about to come alive when it comes alive this is where Greatness we emerge. This is where the greatness of Nigeria lies. This is where the future of Nigeria lies. This is where the, the prosperity of Nigeria lies. The prosperity of Nigeria is not going to come from the West. It's not going to come outside of this country. It is from here that the reservoir, that the reservoir, that is from here that when the war is activated, finances will come, resources will come, spiritual resources, financial resources, material resources, human resources, human and functionaries. 
We emerge and Nigeria will take Africa. Nigeria will take Europe. Nigeria will take the world. Nigeria will come to its place. Oh God. To lead the nation to, to the presence of God, to lead the nation of the world into the presence of God, to lead the Lord into the presence of God, to lead the world to worship God. Come on, he told to Pretudua, Debra, he could to boast, he brought to Catando, he says, Braku, Sapata Patua, he brought to good to go to the Tukutua, he says, Zizanale, Cadu, he cut to the Fida. He procured the Brutu de Becudua. Oh, the queens are the spirit of Travee. This is Nigeria, the spirit of Travee. And the Tapanda, Akte, in the Bruce, in the Kunda Prada, that rested upon the Zacharias, in Totondo Britia. It's rested upon the youth in Nigeria. It's throwing youth into the closet. It's drawing youth into the closet. It's pulling youth into the closet of God, into the upboat of God. And it's resting upon them until they bet the purpose of God. Their intention, oh God, their will is taken from them. Their desire is taken from them. Their pleasure is the pleasure of God. Is the pleasure of pleasure. The pleasure of God is what is prospering in their lives. Come on, Shibrito. prophesy to you. Let the spirit of travel. Let the spirit of travel come upon you, Nigeria. Before Zion travel, she brought forth, oh God, Ikonto, Brento, Zito, Itoka, Duke, Litoko, Duke, Kabrutipro, Itola, Itadua, Dutua, Eko, Isoso, Dikoto, Ikatutupudua, Ilotututuku, Itokututu, Itadoto, Itua, Ilasusu. Nigeria, you are pregnant with revival. You are pregnant with avalanche of God. You are pregnant with revival. The desire of the nations is upon you, Nigeria. You can't fail with decree and declare that the spirit of a travail, a traveling woman, come upon you and you forget about everything but the pains of oh God of travail, the pains of travail until you put forth revival, until you bet revival, until you bet what Satan can't handle, until you bet what the Philistines can't stop, until you bet what the oh God, the war we recognize, the war, oh my God, Jesus, so Nigeria, be swallowed up with the spirit. Be swallowed up with the spirit of travel. Let it come up in the garment. Let it lick you up. Let it swallow you. Let it. Oh, 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 we command the most theory, a theory, a theory of the spirit. Let it come upon every Nigeria. The one that in Nigeria, the one that asked Nigeria, let it rest upon us, let it rest upon us uh, until we go to the place of prayer. And then we labor, we labor in until the greatness of Nigeria, until the future of Nigeria, until the prosperity of Nigeria, until the righteousness of Nigeria, until the glory of Nigeria burst forth, oh God, and consume all the corruption. Let the incorruptible consume the corruptible. Let the immortality swallow up a great mortality in this nation. Let Islamic not be lit up by the move of the spirit. Oh God, and Africa be submerged in the move of the glory of God that will be better by Nigeria. And let the war cannot resist. Oh God, thank you Father. We command the steering. We provoke the steering. We stir the spirit. We stir the waters. We ask, oh God, now let Nigeria step in. Let the young men step in. Let the young women step in. Let the old and young, let the old step in. 
and let the name of the Lord be glorified. Thank you and thank you, Father. Be glorified forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.